Um, so my name's Jo Skinner and I'm a curriculum leader for geography at my school. Um, I also work very closely with um, Laura Woods, who's a lead practitioner for geography at Nodeswood, and also with Darren Bailey, who works at the Ordnance Survey. Um, and we've been working over the last couple of years now um, on developing a department approach um, to GIS. So just to give you a little bit of context and background as to where I am. Um, so this is our school. We're a comprehensive secondary school, 11 to 16. Um, we're located just outside Southampton um, uh, on the edge of the New Forest. Um, we've got year seven to nine is our key stage three and year 10 to 11 is our key stage four. Um, and I joined Nodeswood in September 2022. Um, and when I first joined, um, obviously I wanted to get to know where the department was and what their strengths and weaknesses were. Um, so we did a little bit of an audit and GIS came up as an area that really um, needed developing. So we found that the students would arrive at secondary school with very limited understanding of GIS, um, what it actually meant and how to use it. Um, but also the, the department weren't really using it either. And there was no um, proactive approach to GIS. There was no student use of it. Um, and one of the main reasons was that the staff um, just didn't have experience of using GIS or the confidence either. Um, so where did we start? We um, signed up for Digimaps for Schools, which is what most of the presentation today is going to be about. work with so the timing was quite good um, and they wanted to work with a secondary school to try and develop some student friendly resources to go alongside um, Digimaps so we started our work with Darren on how to in, um, skill up our staff but also and our confidence um, but also to develop some um, resources as well. Um, we've also have dipped into some of the online GIS packages like ArcGIS as well, but most of our journey so far has, has been with Digimaps. And why is it important? Well, I think we all know, um, I'm, I'm sure many of you out there that have signed up to this today are, are geography teachers and would have seen um, the Ofsted reports over recent years about the importance of GIS, but also um, in the recent Mark Enza report that unfortunately GIS is, is not always being used widely um, and often it's, it's due to people's time constraints or maybe their lack of access to IT. Um, but certainly the consensus was that GIS and field work were, were not kind of where they should be. And, and that was certainly the case for us back in 2022. Um, we, we certainly were, were that department where we weren't really using GIS or field work to the extent that we could. So our work with Darren is mainly focused on um, using Digimaps for schools. Um, but we did when we started to introduce GIS, I wanted to introduce this concept that GIS can actually be really, really simple. Um, and it is essentially just layering one map um, with lots of different information on top of each other. So you can see this example on my screen here. Um, we were doing a project about sustainability um, and we were looking at how environmentally friendly our school was. And we were trying to come up with designs as to how we could make it more environmentally friendly. And we used a school map and we just overlaid that map with tracing paper and we put all our ideas onto there, came up with a key and some symbols, symbols and very simply, that was a little bit of GIS. Um, and that's kind of like where we started with trying to develop our staff confidence that it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be as simple as um, a map with a bit of tracing paper on top of it. Then we really got into our use of Digimaps and we actually used it um, with the year six students um, on their moving up days. So in the summer, um, if any of you that work in a secondary setting will know that you have your year sixes come up for the day to get to know their new school environment. And one of the things I was keen for them to do was to actually get to know the layout of the school um, and all of the different areas um, around it. So we did this mood mapping and you can do this on Digimaps because there's some tools on there that allow you to um, use emojis. So I asked them to walk around the school site and plot how they felt um, when they went to the different parts of the school using emojis, which they're obviously all familiar with. Um, and they did that on paper. 
And then when we came back to the classroom, um, they were, we then logged on to Digimaps and we simply used the emojis um, on the drawing function and plotted um, that. And that was actually quite good for us because we could heat map the school essentially and see which areas they felt comfortable in um, and which parts of the school they didn't. And, they, and they, it was quite good fun as well. So that's kind of the first time that our students will experience Digimaps is on their moving up day. When they come into us in year seven, um, we then do quite a lot of work in the first autumn term on kind of building up their geographical skills using the maps and grid references. So not only do we do those on paper maps, but we also get them onto Digimaps as well. Um, so we find grid reference. So this one's just an example of how do I find the grid reference for my house? Um, but we give them a whole selection of different attractions around the local area. Um, and, around, and across the country, and they just get used to um, using Digimaps and finding out what the different um, grid references are. Um, so that's quite good fun. And another thing that we do is we get them to use the um, drawing tool to plot out their route from school as well. So um, they, they find their house, which obviously all of the students love doing when they come onto any of these map, mapping softwares is finding where they live. Um, and I think it's actually real value in giving them that time to do that. Um, and then they use the line function to plot their route to school. And then we talked about, you know, who goes on the longest journey, who lives the closest. And we were measuring that as well within Digimaps. Um, and they could, then they printed it out, put it into their books, and they were describing um, their route to school. Moving on from that, we have used Digimaps to try and help us pre present our fieldwork data as well. So this is an example of us um, in our weather and climate unit towards the end of year seven. Um, we look at um, how the weather and climate varies across the school. And one of the things that they measure is temperature. Um, and they go out and they find the temperature in different sites around um, Nodeswoods. And then they upload that data onto their Excel spreadsheet. And then we use that to create um, this map so that they could see the differences in temperature just in that small area there. Um, and similarly, we've done lots of other field work as well. So this one is when we went down into our local, local high street, it's only a small little village, um, but we went down there and we did a land use survey. We plotted um, all the different types of shops, color coded them, and then we added in our pictures as well. So as Digimaps has really supported us with our fieldwork presentation um, of data. And then another example is this one where when we went on our GCSE fieldwork, we go down to um, Hengisbury Heads and Solent Beach and we do our groin drop profiles. And then when we came back, we just put all of that information into an Excel spreadsheet, imported the data, and then you can quite clearly see the differences in the groin drop profiles. Um, in their maps as well. So um, that was quite nice for the students to visually see their results. Um, but we tried to just kind of drip feed it into lots of different topics. Um, so one of the other ones is rivers. We find it's really useful for this one. So we use this when we look at the River Tees as our case study. Um, I gave them three different places along the River Tees, essentially the upper, middle and lower course. Um, and they had to use Digimaps to look at all of the surrounding landscapes um, and annotate their picture from um, Digimaps that I'd print screened and kind of look at all of the different characteristics so they could compare what the land and the land use is like from the source of the River Tees down through the middle course and then all the way to the mouth as well. Um, and then another one that we've done is coasts, looking at coastal erosion. You, we've used the historical map feature um, looking at past maps of Christ, this is Christchurch and down near Hankersbury Head and plotting on the, um, the coastline and then bringing it to the current day and looking at how much erosion has taken place on that coastline. Our next steps then, so this is, that's kind of where we've got to with it. Um, our next steps is really looking at progression um, and making sure that as we go through 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11, that um, the students are being stretched and challenged and that the, the types of techniques that they're using on Digimaps are gonna be um, more advanced essentially. So um, that's where we would like to go next. Um, and then I've just popped on the end here, any kind of top tips really for um, integrating GIS into your schools. I think it's really important that GIS is 
um, is embedded and recognised in the ethos of your geography department and that you do support each other in the development of that because my experience is that the staff were worried about using GIS because they weren't quite sure how to do it um, but actually once they got onto Digimaps, Digimaps is such a simplistic platform that most people can um, get to grips with it quite quickly um, and so once they had had a little bit of a go on that and we'd done some work on it as staff they were then quite confident to um, move that forward into their lessons. Um, but you know, always be reflective and um, and be open minded when designing different activities, um, and also don't underestimate what the students can do as well because they always teach me something new. Um, they're not scared to click on any buttons on Digimaps, and and they always normally teach me something new um, as well. So that's a that's really um, my kind of whistle stop tour really of what we've done so far um, for Digimaps. Thank you, Joe. That was really informative and a really good uh, uh, example of how you can embed ArcGIS and uh, Digimaps into into school. Um, I'm going to just give you a bit of background on me. I'm I'm a career changer, so I've had a sort of thirty year career in IT, and I've decided to take the plunge into teaching. And I'm halfway through my uh, PGCE at UCL, um, and so I'm loving it. Uh, it's it's hats off to all new teachers. It's it's one of the hard Hardest things I've ever done, but it's one of the things. Uh, along that journey, um, I kept my geographical interest. My first degree was in geography, but I did a master's in GIS at Burbeck um, about ten years ago. And um, it, even in the last ten years, the, the, the rate of change in the GIS market has been incredible. And the good news is, it, tools are becoming easier and easier and easier to use. So um, when I started this ten years ago, it was very much. Uh, Arc was the big beast and it was all desktop and it was quite hard to install and um, have software. But now it's really, really easy. So there's no excuse. Um, and I'm becoming a bit of an evangelist for GIS uh, in my teaching, which is great, because I think that's one of the barriers is just to see how easy it is to use and um, how much how rewarding it is within geography, which is the perfect subject, I think, for displaying locational data with maps and thematic maps in particular. So let me switch to my presentation. Um, just give me a second. Okay. Okay, let's just go. Can you see that now? We can okay, see. Great. Okay, so um, this really is um, a journey through uh, in my, the school. I was my first placement. I've just finished. I had the privilege of being at uh, Harris Academy, Chobham, which is in the east end of London in Stratford, and occupies an iconic building, which was the uh, the home of the Olympic delivery. Uh, organization so all the organization for the olympics london olympics 2012 was there and since 2013 uh, it's been the home of um harris chobham um so um a, a really nice school uh, really great people um its use of gis had sort of waxed and waned i think like a lot of schools um it depends really on the staff um but they do have arc gis they do have digimaps um, and they they sort of its use depends on how much the staff feel comfortable. Um, so what I did was uh, part of the school based study, which if, if you remember from PGCE days is one of the things you do on your placements was really to try and extend the use of GIS within uh, geography in the department. So this was my presentation to the staff in the geography department. Um, and it, it consisted of really four events. Uh, we had an internal CPD session where um, I tried to show some of the tools that you could use, um, their strengths and weaknesses. And out of that discussion, we kind of nailed, um, we zoned in on one usage, which was the uh, NEA uh, requirements for A-level, where you need to geolocate your project study. And traditionally, a lot of the students would just use a, a quick snip of Google Maps uh, with maybe some limited annotation. Um, but we realized that uh, Digimaps had a really, really, e it's a really easy package to use, but incredibly powerful. Um, and we realized that it produces really good quality maps uh, that students can annotate themselves. So it's particularly well suited for this NEA work at A level. Um, but again, as, as Joe has demonstrated, it, you can get really nice looking maps at any key stage. So I ran a couple of workshops uh, 
this is one of, one of the things I must say within schools is getting the equipment and getting access to computers if you are going to have everyone working on a computer. So typically you tend to, to book out computer suites and computer rooms. Um, I'd love to work in a school where everyone had a, a, a laptop themselves, but um, that's maybe at some point in the future. But it is possible you can book out rooms and you can run workshop type activities. Um, and then... Um, we put this together into a final presentation. So I'm going to sort of walk through the main uh, elements of those and take you on this journey and then um, go through the packages again at the end so you can sort of make your own mind of what might work in your school. Okay, so um, first of all, we looked at um, how, how GIS is used in the school and what some of the barriers might be. And as we've mentioned, it's typically people not being aware of what the, what they can do, feeling unconfident that they can use the packages or that there's a technical barrier. But the, the one we looked at, first of all, was was a geo browser, Google Earth. I mean, Google Earth is unbelievably brilliant and it's it's progressed so far in the 10 years that I've been kind of looking at GIS. And it, it's really the place to start, I think, because it's just web based. It's becoming increasingly powerful with many, many features you'd associate with more sophisticated GIS packages. But it's just... It's just brilliant. And the 3D, if anybody, when you leave this call, I urge you to go and look at your own home on Google Earth and just fly around on the 3D view because it's like you're in a helicopter above your house. It's it's amazing. Um, so that's definitely one to start with. The other one that I don't think is, gets a lot of press, but if you're interested in historical maps, is the um, the National Library of Scotland. They have one of the largest collections of geo-referenced maps. And, and by geo-referencing, we just mean that every map uh, it, it points at the same point on Earth. So you can then do s fancy sliders between uh, different maps. And it's got a really extensive library of historical maps. Um, that's also included as part of um, Digimaps for Schools, but it's it's only got two, two levels, two ages of, of historical maps. This one has hundreds, and it really has some quite sophisticated tools for mapping old to new. I, I think in the picture there, you can see a spyglass. You can also use overlays swipes dual views but uh, again it's just a website so there's no extra packages or installs or logins involved and i i do urge you to if you're interested in historical os maps and you get a taster for this with digimaps for schools do look at the national library of scotland it's it's really really good um let me just come back in. The other one, of course, the big beast is, is Esri. Um, Arc GIS Online is a fabulous product. Um, there's they do a lot of work with schools. Um, and they what I've increasingly found now that I'm within the school is that they do a lot of their teaching aids are pre-packaged for particular curriculum activities. So I put together this little map on tectonics showing plate movements, volcanoes, and earthquakes. But there's um, there's uh, there's teach with GIS sections on their website, which have prepackaged um, tools and storybooks about uh, different geographical features and phenomena. Um, and they're a really easy entry. But if you want to go the whole hog, this is really a fully functioned GIS package and you can add all of the layers you want. It's, think of it like. Um, your iPhone where they've outsourced all the maps to a million app providers and they just provide the platform. So. In a way, it's its strengths and weakness. There's a, there's thousands and thousands of map layers. You will be able to find exactly what you want, but you'll also get lost in millions of different maps. But um, I would start with the prepackaged maps that Esri produced because they're really, really good. And then we came on to Digimaps. So this has a lot of appeal because it's uh, particularly for, for UK based schools because it's based on OS maps. Uh, it has enough overlays and uh, that makes it really interesting so a rich set of aerial photos historical maps and the best thing i think is the fact that you can add easily to your own maps so you can go and create things that um, that, that are personalized and uh, you produce a good looking map and this is where we led to the suggestion of using um looking with key stage five at the nea assess uh, nea um geolocation works so we held a couple of workshops um here we are there's me sitting in front of a big screen with a london stadium uh, highlighted so um the, the the children as as joe said that they, they just take to this because they're all far more technology savvy than we are and they just love to play and uh it makes it a really good interactive lesson where you can demonstrate they can they can have a go they can ask questions and it becomes a really uh fluid exchange of ideas um 
and it was so it was well received. So we thought, let's try this on year 30 and see if we can make a difference to the any a works that actually is going on right now. Um, I took a slightly different approach with this. Sorry, it's a bit small there, but I thought rather than just a, a free format workshop, we um I, I created a worksheet that would actually describe all the stages I want them to go through in terms of how you'd log in, how you would zoom at different scales, um, how you might start to measure grid references, annotate your map with labels, add photos. And I, there's a few challenges and puzzles in there that you can you can write answers. So we did a little um, how to get to from the school to Sainsbury's local where everyone seemed to go for their lunch and measure that and measure the, the area of the Olympic Stadium um, and just get to use these tools. The, the other nice thing there was that um, I've tried to include the icons so that once you've done this activity, it acts as a kind of a cheat sheet and a reference sheet so that you can then refer to this. Um, remember, oh, yeah, that's the button you've got to press there, because, um, again, one of the barriers here is, you know, I can't remember how I did that. But uh, as, as, as Joe said, children aren't afraid to play. I think it's the teachers that are less of a thing. But it, this forms a really useful guide. And so the first part was all about making your own map to the point where you could save and, and print it. And then the second part was much more of a play session where go and find your own house, use the, the overlay features where you can switch between um, historic views of, of the area and current views or aerial views. And that's always fabulous, especially in London and in the East End of London where we are. The land use change has been incredible. Um, and I think Stratford is often used as a case study for re urban regeneration. And you can see why when you, when you flick between uh, just 100 years ago or 50 years ago to compare to what it is now. It's a, it's a radical change. And it's it's displayed really brilliantly. So um, his, this was sort of an example. So just basic things you could do on a map, add in uh, labels, grid references, text boxes, photos, lines, polygons. Um, as In Joe's case, she, she had a key that they produced. Um, for land use change so all of this is possible and look you, you, what it produces is a really good looking map with scales with with compass with accreditation um, and that's just a, that's a button press that's just press the print button with a few um, configuration settings you've got a really good pdf for presentation into your nea so a, a really good uh, base map um, that's customizable um, we did a little survey afterwards to see what people thought. Um, had they used GIS before? Um, and somehow, I mean, the, the big favorites are there. Google Earth is clearly the most popular, or Google Maps in, in a simpler form. Uh, but ArcGIS is used, uh, and the teach with ArcGIS I mentioned is these prepackaged um, little thematic uh, lesson uh, uses, which are a really good way to start. Uh, a few uses of Digimaps, but the good news was after this, uh, we asked would they would they like to use Digimaps for schools for their NEA work, and most said uh, likely or very likely. Um, there was a don't know, but I'll come on to them later because they, they, even they got to use it. Um, what did they like about it? Being able to add my own data to the map, that was great. Um, and this uh, really, every teacher wants to see this. What do you enjoy least in today's workshop? The lesson ending. So that's also, that's also a good way to... Clearly, they enjoyed it and they didn't want it to end. So that's a good way of uh, thinking it was a, a successful uh, journey. Um, the person that didn't know where they were using it, the reason was they were they did their case study in Spain, um, in Sitges, the uh, near Barcelona. Um, but no matter, um, uh, Digimaps does have an arrangement with Collins Bartholomew. So um, even outside uh, UK, you get relatively detailed maps of uh, non-UK areas um, using the Bartholomew data set. And here's got this map is, is actually a student's uh, map in NEA. And you can see it's got all the features we've been describing, grid references, label points, markers, photos, annotations, keys. So it's a good looking map, all produced with a package that's a, a cheap cost to the school and very easy to run and, and use. Um, just to say, this is what I went through again. Um, do try Google um, Google Earth. I think um, you'll be amazed at some of the features that are being added to it. Um, there is a time lapse now that you can run a historical series. You can 
look at oceans, you can look at, uh, you can flip into a 3D view, which is really, really powerful for really getting to feel a place. Um, you know, you can go on virtual field trips with this thing and really get a sense of place uh, anywhere in the world. Um, that's good. Again, this one, uh, the National Library of Scotland, um, the quality of the historic maps is fabulous. And I think anyone who wants to see what did my place look, what did where I live or where I'm at school look like in the past, this is a really good set of, of maps and great for land use change and totally free. Um, again, ArcGIS, um, really quality thematic maps. This will be, it doesn't have to be the whole lesson. You can flip into this from your PowerPoints uh, or you can cut and paste and snip it. But um, they're at their best when they're interactive and moving. Things. Uh, here's the plate boundaries. Where's the volcanic activity? Where are the people? And really spin a story on volcanic hazards um, live and drill into any part of the world you want. And then, as we talked about Digimaps for schools, I think this is fantastic for field work, uh, historical land use, um, annotated maps. And um, the ability to add your own data, particularly from fieldwork, I think makes it really good as a starting point for schools. Um, that's it. Thank you for your time. I'll take any questions.